Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. I wonder where my coolant will go. Hey, in this video, we're going to be discussing how coolant could be entering your crankcase and contaminating your engine oil. Hey guys, Josh with the Adept Ape channel here, and I've been thinking of making this video for a little while now, and so I've finally decided to make it. And the video basics are, how does coolant or antifreeze get into your oil or into your engine crankcase? And I did a video about a year ago discussing how to test for a cracked head or a blown head gasket, but there are many other ways that coolant can enter your engine, especially on a diesel engine. And we're mostly gonna be talking about Caterpillar engines here, but if you own a Cummins or a Detroit, a lot of these principles will apply to those as well. So before we jump into the video, I wanna say thank you to the donors since the last video. We've had quite a few. Uh, Craig, Noah, Brian, Edward, Donald, Lee, Gerald, John, Carlos, and Jonathan all sent in donations to adeptape at yahoo.com on PayPal. And I would like to say thank you very much, and on to the video. So let's first discuss how you find out that you have coolant in your oil. Um, some of the easier ways you'll find out are typically you'll check your dipstick, and you'll notice there might be rust or a grayish, whitish, mayonnaise-like material either on the fill cap or on the dipstick tube. This is a good indication that you have coolant and or water getting into your crankcase, and this is not usually a good thing. But there are several places it can be coming from. You need to find if there's other symptoms involved. I have a video discussing how to check if you have a cracked head or a blown head gasket, and it involves doing a bottle test. I recommend watching that video I posted about a year ago to test if you're putting air into your cooling system, because this can also tell you if you have coolant going into your engine. Now, usually you'll have some other symptom if you have blown head gasket. You saw the white smoke, that's a pretty good indicator there. Um, you might have moisture coming out of your blow-by tube. This is actually just high blow-by, but if your blow-by looks like this and you actually have moisture accumulating underneath, well, that's not a good sign either. That probably means you have coolant getting into your oil. Now, another way to tell is Say you don't have a leak, but your coolant level just keeps dropping and dropping. Well, that's not good. Now you might start thinking, oh my gosh, I have coolant in the oil. I'm gonna have to pay $30,000 for a rebuild, which means I'm gonna have to sell my truck. My dog's gonna run away. My wife's gonna leave me. I'm gonna have to sell all my possessions. And all they'll know is from a note they find on my cold dead body in a Walmart parking lot. None of that's gonna happen because you watch this video and you're gonna understand a lot more about your engine and where that coolant is getting into your oil. Now, I don't wanna downplay the seriousness of coolant in the oil. It can, it obviously is contaminating the oil, which is gonna change your viscosity and coolant's not a good lubricant, so it can damage your bearings. And if that grayish, murky stuff stays in the engine too long, it can cause some rust issues um, it's not good for your engine, but that does not mean necessarily that your engine has to be rebuilt just because you're getting coolant in your oil. So let's go over where coolant can be getting into your oil and what you need to do to fix it. So the most common area for coolant to be getting into your engine is a cracked head or a blown head gasket. But as I stated before, those usually come with other symptoms. You might be pushing coolant out of the expansion tank. You'll probably have um, possibly a rough running engine. You'll have usually smoke, um, usually white smoke. But if you don't have any other symptoms, if you just have coolant in the oil, there's many other places it could be coming from. These are 3406 liner seals. So most of the CAT engines have removable and replaceable liners opposed to like an automotive style block that just has a 
solid block where the piston packs have to be machined in and out. These can be removed and the O-rings can be actually just changed out. Say you don't have high blow by or your piston packs are in good condition, you can actually just reseal these and reinstall them. Now, sometimes this area here where the seal sit will be cavitated and eaten away. So not necessarily that the O-rings have failed, but the block itself has actually been damaged by electrolysis or cavitation. In that case, you would have to do some either Belzona, um, which is like a JB weld, or machine new sealing areas into your block. Now another place, which is not very common, but is a possibility, is your air compressor. The air compressor has oil and coolant in separate compartments inside the air compressor, and it's possible that your air compressor could be have a small internal crack that is causing somehow the oil and the coolant to be contaminated inside the air compressor. So just keep that in mind. That would actually be a fairly cheap fix. Now, if you have a C10 or a C12, that has a weep hole on it that actually vents internal to the crankshaft. So if you're getting coolant in your oil there, check the water pump. Um, might not be a major fix, just a water pump. Now let's discuss some areas where parts get changed because there's coolant in the oil, but not usually the fault of the part that gets changed. And the first one I see a lot of is the oil cooler. The oil cooler is a very basic item. It's basically a bunch of rods that's inside some sort of resin and an outer steel housing that has coolant pressure while running and oil pressure on the other side. Now, what pressure is usually higher while running? Oil pressure. Oil pressure is usually running let's say at 1500 RPM, you may have anywhere from 40 to 80 PSI, depending on the engine and how good your bearings and your oil pump are. And what's your coolant pressure usually around? Well, in the block, it's usually more than the caps rated at. It's usually about 15 to 20 PSI. So which one's higher? The oil pressure. So if your oil cooler has failed, usually you will get oil in the coolant and not necessarily coolant in your oil. Now, most trucks don't just have one oil cooler. There's also a tranny cooler. Think about it. And similar things can happen. If you're getting oil in your coolant, check your tranny cooler and you might have coolant in your transmission, which would be the most likely cause. That would be your transmission oil cooler. Now I stated before that if you have a C10 or a C12 and you're getting coolant in your oil, check your water pump because the weep hole vents inside the crankcase typically. Um, I've seen a few water pumps changed because there was coolant getting in the oil. Um, on most other engines, not gonna be the water pump. The weep holes almost always vent external to the engine. So you usually see a coolant leak on the ground opposed to inside your crankcase. So there's not too many other places where coolant and oil are gonna mix. Um, you know, you could have a cracked block or something that's very uncommon. Um, you know, maybe you're thinking, oh, well, you know, there's injector cups in the head and there's oil in the head. Well, yes, you do have injector cups in all of your engines that have electronic unit injectors, and those do seal coolant from escaping out of the head. However, that's usually connected to a fuel rail that's in the head. And that fuel rail is usually under much higher pressure than the coolant is. So you'll usually see, if you have a bad cup or a bad cup seal, you'll usually see fuel in your coolant and possibly coolant inside of your fuel tank if your cup is bad or cracked possibly. Um, so cups, very unlikely. Um, of course you can check for, you know, freeze plugs or other items that may have been damaged inside the block or inside the head that could be leaking internally. Fairly uncommon on Caterpillar engines. Um, so any other places coolant could possibly be getting in that engine. We've already covered the liner packs, 
the cylinder head, the head gasket, the air compressor. Um, you know, if you can't find a leak, they make a small special tool that will go on your radiator tank where the, uh, where the fill cap is, or the pressure cap on your radiator tank, and you can pressurize the cooling system, even if the engine's off. And look for leaks, um, because sometimes the leak's only there under pressure, and say it's a liner leak, you have to pull the pan, usually it's going to have cooled down by the time you get the pan off. Buy one of these tools, it'll help you troubleshoot that leak from where it's coming from. So I hope this video has clarified some of the misconceptions of where your coolant could be getting into your engine from. And if you're trying to troubleshoot it yourself, maybe some tips for where to look at. All right, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like and subscribe. Thank you.